Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us, and grows ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouth of all your people, Israel, may we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohim, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence through light you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <clears throat> Today's reads are Hebrews 12, 18 through 29, James 2, 8 through 13 and 1 Peter 2 9 through 10 Hebrews 12 18 through 29 for you have not come to what may have may be touched a blazing fire and a darkness and glooming and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearing the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given if even a beast touches the mountain it shall be stoned Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable, ang innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to Elohim, the judge of all. And to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Yeshua, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. <laughs> At that time, his voice shook the whole earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is, things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to Elohim acceptable worship, with reverence and awe, for our Elohim is a consuming James 2 8 through 13 if you are really if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture you shall love your neighbor as yourself you are doing well but if you show partially you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it for he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder. If you do not commit adultery but murder, you have became a transgressor of the law. <clears throat> so speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. 1 Peter 2, 9-10 if you are chosen, if but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for its own possession, that you may proclaim the excellence, excellencies of him who call you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but you are Elohim's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brukat Adonai Elohim, Malach Kalo, Mashan Atal, Lenu Torah, Lemev, Baishi Elo, Natabatha, can you brukat Adonai in Atina Torah?
Hello all and welcome to tonight's tour portion. Before we get started, I'm a slayer blessing. Blessed art thou, Donai Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people as you may. We and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house as you may. We all together know your name and study your Torah for sake fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you. Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel, blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the universe, who showed us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Uh, today's read is Ephesians 6, 1, 1 Timothy... 3, 1 through 13, and Titus 1, 5 through 9. Yeah. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment. With a promise that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. One Timothy three one through thirteen. The saying is trustworthy. Trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of Overseer, he desires a noble task, therefore an overseer must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not a violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, he must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for Elohim's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with the, with conceit and fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Deacons likewise must be, must be dignified, not double-tongued. No... Not addicted to much wine, not greedy for di for dishonest gain, they must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. And let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as deacons, if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let, let deacons... Each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a, gr a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Yeshua HaMashiach. Titus 1, 5-9 This is why I left you in Crete, so that you may put what remained into order. And appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife and his children are believers, and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer as Elohim steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or a violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. You must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine, and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life from amidst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Bruka ta Adonai Elohim, you malach alom. Ashna ta lenu tereni me baishi elom. Natabete kenyu bruka ta Adonai natina tera.
Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say your customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohinu, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we in our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name. And study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who drove us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep, keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you, may Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Acts 6, 1 through 7, Romans 2, 17 through 29. Uh, 7, 7 through 12, 13, 8 through 10. Now in these days when her disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were becoming, were being neglected in the daily dis distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of Elohim to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out of you from among, pick out from among you seven men of good re re repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they have, what they said, pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man of faith, and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip. In Prochorus, in Nicanor, in Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they sent before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of Elohim continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient up to the faith. Romans 2, 17 through 29. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast in Elohim, all know his will and approve what is excellence, because you are instructed from the law. And if you are sure that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor to the foolish, a teacher of children having the law, the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then who teach others, do not teach yourself. While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that one must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? And you who offer idols, do you rob temples? And you who boast in the law, dishonor Elohim by breaking the law. For as it is written, the name of Elohim is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. For circumcision is deed for circumcision is indeed is of value if you obey the law, but if you break the law your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. So if a man who is uncircumcised keeps the precepts of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Then he who is physically uncircumcised but keeps the law will condemn you who have the written code in circumcision, but break the law. For no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly. No one is circumcision outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from Elohim. Romans 7, 7-12 seven What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it has not been for the law, I would not know sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had said not. You shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life 
proved to be death to me. For sin seizing an opportunity through the commandment deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. Romans 13, 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandment, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, and you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this, wor these, this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfilling of the law. Blessed art thou, Odonai Elohinu, king of the universe, who gave the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Odonai, giver of the Torah, Bukata Odonai Elohinu, Malakalo, Mashana, Talunu, Tere, Met, Baishi, Elohim, the Tabata, can you Bukata Odonai, and Tina Torah? Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I must say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all you people of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah, bless to you, O Donai, giver of the Torah. May Donai bless you and keep watch over you. May Donai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Donai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. We have three reads today, and they're all in Matthew. Matthew 6, 1 through 7, 29. <laughs> Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that you, your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. <coughs> and when you pray... You must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, and they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heaven Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. <clears throat> Sorry. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure, disfigure their faces that their fasting might be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others. But by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourself treasure on earth, where moth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is light in your in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, 
or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Elohim and money. <clears throat> Therefore, if I tell you don't be anxious about your life, what will you eat or what will you drink? Nor about your body, what you will put on. Put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they neither toil or spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But Evelim so clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of Elohim and his, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day <clears throat> is its own trouble. Judge not that you be not judged, for the judgment you pronounce you will, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is on your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly and take the, to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy. Do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. <clears throat> Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which of you, if his son asks him to break bread, will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law in the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for this gate is wide, and the way is easy, that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. And the gate that is narrow is the way is hard and leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You recognize them by their fruits, or grapes gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles. So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fr fruit, near, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the ones who do, who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works, many mighty works in your name? And then I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears the words of mine and does them will be like a wise man, but who built his house on the rock, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And any everyone who bears these words of mine, and does not do them, will be like foolish man who builds, builds his house on the sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against the house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And when Yeshua finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one who has authority and not as their scribes. Matthew 15, 1 through 11. 
When the Pharisees and scribes came to Yeshua from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For do they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of Elohim for the sake of your tradition? For Elohim commanded on your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother, What would you have gained from me is given to Elohim? He did not... He need not honor his father for the sake of your traditions you may have you have made void the word of Elohim you hypocrites well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said thus this people honors me with their lips but their hearts are far from me in vain do they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men and he called the people to him and said to them hear and understand it is not what goes in the mouth that defiles a person, but one com what comes out of the mouth that this defiles a person. Matthew nineteen sixteen through thirty. And behold, a man came up to him, saying, "Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life?" And said to him, "Why do you ask me what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments." He said to him, "Which ones?" And Yeshua said. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to himself, All these I have kept, what do I still lack? And Yeshua said to him, If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heavens and come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Yeshua said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. When her disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Yeshua looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, with Elohim all things are, are possible. Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left nothing and followed you. Well, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Yeshua said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and everyone who, is, who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and last first. Blessed art thou, Don Eloheinu, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and said everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Bruka Tau Donle. Eloheinu Malaka Lo, Mashanatal Lenu, Tereti Met Vaishi Elom, Nathabeti Kinu, Bruka Tau Donle, Natina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say your blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohinu. King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohinu, speak the words of your Torah in their mouths, and the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people. People, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who chooses Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <coughs> We have three reads. The first one is Exodus 18, 1 through 20, 23. Jethro, the peace, priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard that all heard of all that Elohim had done for Moses and for Israel, his people. How Yahweh had brought Israel out of <coughs> Egypt. 
Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zephora's Moses' wife, after he had sent her home, along with her two sons. The name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for he <coughs> said, The Elohim of my father was my help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his son and his wife to Moses in the wilderness, where he was encamped at Mount at the mountain of Elohim, and when he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, are coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him, and they asked each other of their welfare and went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law that Yahweh, what Yahweh had done to Pharaoh and to Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had come upon them, in the way, and how Yahweh had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the good that Yahweh had done for Israel, and that he had delivered them out of the hands of the Egyptians. <clears throat> Jethro said, Blessed be Yahweh, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Yahweh is greater than all Elohims, because in this affair they dealt arrogantly with the people. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrificed to Elohim. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before Elohim. <clears throat> the next day Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? <clears throat> Excuse me. Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till morning, uh, from morning till evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because people come to me to inquire of Elohim, and when they have a dispute, they come to me, and I decide between one person and the other, and I make them know all the statutes of Elohim and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What do you, what you are doing is not good. You and the people. With you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. Now obey my voice. I'll give you advice, and Elohim be with you. You shall represent the people before Elohim and bring their cases to Elohim. And you shall not warn them of, of the statutes or laws, and make them known the way in which they must walk, and what they must do. Moreover, look for more able men from all the people who... Men who fear Elohim, who are trustworthy and hate a bribe, and place men over the people as chiefs, thousands of chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, and make them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they shall decide themselves, so it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden for you. If you do this, Elohim will direct you, and you will be able to endure, and all this people will also go into their place in peace. <clears throat> so Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. Moses chose able men out of Israel and made them heads over the people, chiefs of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and of tens. And they judged people at all times. Any hard case brought to Moses, but any small matter they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went away to his own country. <clears throat> on the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. And they set out from Rephidim, and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to Elohim, Yahweh called out, <coughs> called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed ob obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be my... Be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. 
So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that Yahweh had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to Yahweh, and Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear what I speak to you, and may also believe you forever. When Moses told the words of people to Yahweh, Yahweh said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments, and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, Yahweh will come down on the Mount Sinai in the sight of the people, and you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot, whether beast or man, he shall not live. When a trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people. They washed their garments and he said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people of the camp trembled. Then Moses said to the people out of the camp, Oh, brought the people out of the camp to meet Elohim, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke, because Yahweh had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke. And Elohim answered him in a thunder. Yahweh came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and Yahweh called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Yahweh said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to Yahweh, and look, and many of them perish, and let the priests who come near to Yahweh consecrate themselves, lest Yahweh break out against them. And Moses said to Yahweh, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warn us, saying, Set limits around a mountain and consecrate it. And Yahweh said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to Yahweh, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You should all have no other Elohims before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to the thousands of those who love me, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your Elohim. And on it you shall, do, shall not do any work, you or your sons or your daughters, or your male servants or your female servants or your livestock or your sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day make it, and made it holy. You. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land of Yahweh your Elohim is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or your male servants or your female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. <laughs> Now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, and they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let Elohim speak to us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for Elohim has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahweh said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the people of Israel, 
You have seen for yourselves that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make gods of silver to be with me, nor shall you make for yourselves gods of silver. An altar of earth you shall make for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your offering and your peace offerings and your sheep and your oxen and every place that I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. If you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stones, for if you wield your tool on it, you profane it. And you shall not go up by steps to my altar, that your nakedness be not exposed on it. Our second read. Isaiah 1 through 7, 6. Oh, Isaiah 6, 1 through 7, 6. In the year that King Uz Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple, and he stood up. <coughs> Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with the other two he covered his feet. And with two he flew, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the fountain of his of the thresholds took shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen King Yahweh of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go. And say to this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, and their ears heavy, and blind their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears. And understand with their hearts, and turn, and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitants. And houses without people in the land is a desolate waste. And Yahweh removes people from far away. And the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia. The king of Israel came up to Jerusalem to wage, to wage war against it, but could not not yet mount an attack against it. When the house of David was told, Syria is in league with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz, the son of his people, shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. And Yahweh said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz. <coughs> Excuse me. You and Shear Jashub, your son, the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field. And say to him, Be careful, be quiet, do not fear, do not let your heart be faint, because these are two smoldering stumps of firebrands. At the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria, the sons of Romalia, because Syria and Ephraim, the son of Romalia, has devised evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and terrify it, and let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up the son of Tabil as king in the midst of it. Isaiah 9, 6-7 For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty Elohim, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice 
and with righteousness, for this time, forth and forevermore, the zeal of Yahweh of hosts will do this. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of Jesus, the everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohim, you Malach Alom. Asher et al lanut ready met by she alom, natabet te kedu brukata donai, atina taraf.